Destructive, non-destructive, these are terms that have been thrown around quite a bit and you may have heard them before. However, you might not know what they mean or what the real benefit of one over the other is. In this video, we'll take a look at both and how to do it inside Logic Pro. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick tip in Logic Pro, and it's gonna be an explanation into something that's a fundamental understanding when editing audio. Destructive and non-destructive. What is the difference? And what do I mean by those terms? They are somewhat self-explanatory. Starting with non-destructive. Non-destructive is where you don't make any changes to the key audio file. You record a guitar and then you throw on a reverb effect. It's a plugin in your signal chain and it's not making any destructive changes to the original recording. You can take that reverb away at any time and be left with the original recording. Non-destructive. Destructive on the other hand means that you're making a permanent change to the audio file you recorded. You record that guitar file and then you make a change to that guitar file. Possibly you bake the reverb into the file. Or maybe you make more subtle changes like you increase the volume or cut a section of it out. All of that is destructive. Now, most of the time, doors are very handy tools and they guide us towards non-destructive quite a bit. Most of the plugins that you use, most of the mixing tools that you're gonna use, the way that you even cut regions down and, and take things out, it's actually all non-destructive a lot of the time. There are some doors that are far more destructive than others, like Adobe Audition, for example. But a lot of the doors for music production like Ableton, Logic, Cubase, all of those popular ones are often geared towards non-destructive editing. Now, the biggest benefit, of course, of non-destructive editing is that you can undo any change that you've made and go back to the original recording. Don't like the reverb, don't like the compression, don't like the EQ settings you chose, take it all away, start again. However, there are sometimes things that need to be changed with the original file. And this is more straying into when we're talking about editing or fixing an issue. Maybe there's a lot of noise build up and we need to get rid of that noise. Maybe there are certain sections that just need the volume boosted because they're just way too low. These sorts of issues can usually be resolved in a destructive manner that yes, changes the file, but once changed and if done well, will really improve the overall sound. Let's look at the two places that this happens in Logic Pro as an example. Okay, so I've got one of my mix sessions up here at the moment and you can see some audio files here. And in fact, a lot of these groups have audio files in them. One thing that I actually quite like to do a lot of the time is create a separate session for my mix. Even though I use a lot of virtual instruments and I make and compose the music inside the door a lot of the time, I then export everything out, all as audio files, and mix that. There are a few pros and cons to that, and it might be a different way of working to the way that you do. I will definitely explain that at some point in the future, the pros and cons of that, so why not subscribe if you wanna find out why. For now though, let's check out these audio files. Now let me solo up for a moment this strings group. So I've basically got a bowed cello and a bowed violin, and they're basically doing these re-bowing techniques, and they're really, really wonderful. If I play a section for you for context, A really gorgeous sound. I actually did a review of this library. I'll leave a link above and below. It's a fantastic library by Evolution Series. Really gorgeous. Anyway, these are audio files. They are files that are sitting there in my track session. Now, most of what we do in Logic is actually non-destructive. For example, if I select this one and I just decide to chop out all of this, I haven't got rid of all of this. This is actually still there. It's non-destructive. At any time I can come back, and just add the whole thing back. If I didn't like a section, that's fine. I can cut that section out, delete that section, but then at any time, bring it back. In fact, I can just join up those files again with a Command J. This is the power of non-destructive editing. It's that you can make drastic changes to your audio file and always go back. You never have to worry about losing that fantastic recording. Other things that are non-destructive, of course, on here you can see that I've got an EQ, and of course that would be non-destructive. It's a plugin on top that is then processing the audio and playing it through, and in this case it's just got a, a simple high-pass filter just to cut out some of the low-end nonsense that I don't really need. Both of these pass through to this group, so then of course I've got some plugins there as well. All these plugins, including things like delay, reverb, they're all non-destructive. You can take away that plugin at any time and be left with the original recording. 
So pretty much anything you do in this track workspace and anything over here is, is pretty much non-destructive, but there is a location where you can do some destructive editing. And there are two ways to go about it. Let me select this one, for instance, and I'm gonna open up the editor just with the scissors at the top or using the E shortcut. So this is the track editor inside Logic. Over here, you can see track, file, and smart tempo, three different options. And under the track, I'm still in non-destructive. Here, for example, I can click here, use my command T shortcut, and chop out this silence section if I wanted to. I could do that if I like. However, let's come across to file, and this is going to be where our destructive editing can take place. When I click on file, you can see this coming up. And right now I've got this first region selected, so it's highlighting what part of the file is actually being referenced in this one region. But you can see the rest of the file is there. As I click this second region though, you can see it's now referencing the second part. And if I scroll over, you can see that it's avoiding this part, which was the part that's not being played. In both cases, my region has been chopped, but it hasn't changed the file that's really there. The whole file is there, and the region is actually just playing back a specific part of the original track, non-destructive. So all that chopping that I've done before in the track editor or on the track workspace, that is all non-destructive. Nothing is being changed. I'm just chopping out different sections and it's referencing the same original file unchanged. Here in the track workspace though, we have several options to be able to permanently change things. For instance, in this functions menu over here, whenever I click on here, all of these options are definitely permanent destructive changes. If I normalize this file, this whole audio file will be normalized and that will be it. The file is permanently normalized. Normalize is the process of where you take the loudest sound in a track and raise it to the loudest it can possibly be and everything by default is raised along with it. It's basically turning up the volume so that the biggest peak is at the loudest volume. Useful sometimes in things like samplings or getting a, a good sort of balance overall of tracks if you want, but doing it here and normalizing the file is going to be a permanent destructive change. You can't go back. The same can be said for fade-ins and changing gains in certain sections. For example, if I highlight this one particular section here, jump into functions and go normalize, you can see a warning pop up here. It's actually saying this edit will be destructive. It will remove the ability to go back and change it later. Let's hit process and see what happens. Don't worry, I've got a backup of this file and that I definitely recommend before making any kind of destructive editing. Okay, so there you go. You can see the normalize has taken effect and this huge spike here, this transient here has been brought out to the loudest possible sound. And that you can see over here as well, you can see it's so much louder. So it might be handy if you wanna raise the volume of one particular area. You don't have to normalize it like this. You could just raise it by a certain amount. Let's take this section, for example, jump into my functions and go change gain. Let's go up by about three decibels. You can see that that's now updated there and has boosted the volume of that section. So there are some handy tools that might be important when you haven't got the perfect take and you do need to make some edits. However, this is all destructive. This all changes the file. So you need to be very careful and very sure that this is what you wanna do. Logic does have the option as well of editing in a third party piece of software that is also destructive. Let me take this violin for example, I've selected that one there. If I jump up to my edit options, I've got something called Open in Isotope RX9 Audio Editor. I own Isotope's RX9 and I have that installed on this computer and I've set it up as an external connection to Logic Pro. It's something you set up in the general settings or preferences. You jump across from audio and you jump into file editor and you just make sure that you select a particular application for this external sample editor. It should be noted again, file editor. Anytime you see file, you're probably pretty sure it's going to be destructive. Okay, so once I clicked that, you can see it opening up the file inside RX, and there are many, many options for us to change and affect this sound if we would like. Here, for example, if I wanted to highlight the whole thing and then jump over to denoise, or maybe even something as simple as EQ, a particular curve in there. That is all possible from this RX tool. The thing is though, it is entirely destructive. You will have to go Command S to save or whatever to save on top of the original file. And then when you go back to Logic, Logic will update that file and it will be permanent forever. So absolutely make sure 100% that you want 
to make this change before you do it. So there you have it, the difference between destructive and non-destructive. I hope that helps you make some better decisions inside your door or open up some more tools if you weren't aware of them. I've got plenty more logic tips on the way and plenty more music production tips as well. So do subscribe if you're new here. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.